Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. You know, I love that Passport Bros always give each other advice and always, you know, tell each other about countries and just how women work in some of those countries. It's wonderful. This community is pretty awesome, in my opinion, overall. Uh, I mean, of course, there's bad apples in every community. But there's also so many gorgeous Asian women all over, the, like just from Japan to Philippines to Vietnam. And they all have a different look, but still look quite gorgeous. So please like subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get that chow. It's chow time. This one's for the Passport Bros about dating in Japan. Mm-hmm. Look at me, Passport Bro. Some beautiful Japanese ladies. Good. Yeah. They're great. Very feminine, very caring very nurturing you'll be very hard pressed to find fat japanese girl in japan very True. difficult to find ugly ones are very rare in general the average beauty level of a japanese girl is probably the highest in the world they don't have as many as you know 10 out of 10s there but they don't have any ugly ones they do it's just very rare but they're far from <laughs> the easiest girls to date or to get with or whatever you're looking for okay. far from it they're very cautious when it comes to dating. From what I've been able to tell, it's because back in the day, we're more like Thailand or the Philippines or something like that, where it was just extremely easy to get with them. I think a lot of them got burned. Learned that, oh, you know, the white guy or the Western man, they're just looking to use you. And to be fair, a lot of guys do do that. So they're that's a lot true. more cautious over there with that stuff. I'm probably that's right good. That's... So I don't blame them at all. I think that's actually a good thing that they're more cautious. That means they're vetting out men better than most women in other countries. Then I guess if this is how he's going about it. Oh, second thing that's kind of negative is they don't speak very good English at all. It's getting better. It's okay. You can find girls that speak some English, but they're very hesitant to do so. And if you can learn some Japanese, it'll go a really long ways over there. This one's for- if you guys want to go, definitely want to learn Japanese, guys. That's definitely a kind of a must almost. I mean, there are going to be some Japanese women that speak English and can, you know, communicate in English, but learn the language. $100,000, you can buy this passport. This is a- So, updates on passport. It seems like EU is going to require the US to have visas to go visit soon, and that actually weakens the US passport greatly. This is why I put this video in there for people that are really well off that want to have access. And it's actually really good to have multiple passports. So, you know, if you can't leave with the U.S. passport, you might be able to use this particular Lucian passport to travel to other countries. You know, it's when certain travel bans happen for certain citizens and certain passports, especially in the U.S., especially during the, you know, 19 era. Um you're able to still leave. This is quite expensive. I understand that. But it gives you a lot of freedoms that the U.S. is actually starting to lose. When the U.S. passport used to be one of the most powerful, I think it still is, but it's starting to lose its effect as the U.S. is losing its hold on global markets and global trends, I guess. This is a passport to a country you probably have never heard of. It's called St. Lucia. It's a tiny island nation in the Caribbean with a population that's the same as Eugene. What is Eugene? Yeah, you get my point. Eugene is a city in Oregon with about 180,000 people. So why on earth would someone buy a passport to this random, small, tiny island nation in the Caribbean? And why am I seeing billboards to buy a passport all over countries like Lebanon right now? The answer is this. If someone has a weak passport, you want to have another passport. So imagine... Imagine you're born in Syria. This passport will let you visit less than 30 countries around the world. But if you're rich enough, you can essentially buy a passport in St. Lucia and suddenly become a so-called citizen. And now you can travel visa-free to 145 countries around the world instead of just 30. And in some cases, you can do this whole process without ever even stepping foot in St. Lucia. Okay, okay. Technically, it's not called buying a passport. It's called citizenship by investment or 100. It's, it's actually a pretty good idea, especially for the men that, you know, are a little bit more well off to have a good amount of money. $100,000 might not be too much to you, and it will give you access to another passport. Again, I am still a Cambodian citizen. I plan on getting my Cambodian passport also, and I have a U.S. Pa- well, I'm trying to get my U.S. passport again. Um, and again, U.S. passports are weaking or weakening.
So you might want to just look into some of these things. I want to back check you. Oh God, all right, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, well you said women are more promiscuous than men. Yes. That's not true. It's 100% true. It's not true. 100% true. It's not true. What you're saying is, is men have a higher sex drive, correct? Yeah. Which is true. Men biologically, yeah. because we have testosterone, are have a higher sex drive. So you would think that that would lead to men being more promiscuous. And here's the difference though. The men who are capable of securing casual sex very easily, those men, yes, are promiscuous. However, the difference is women have more access to being promiscuous because it's very easy for women to get laid, whereas it's, it's rather difficult for men to get laid, relatively speaking, comparatively speaking. So less men have access to hookup culture. This is what trips me out that a lot of young women, a lot of women in the West really think that men are out there just slaying pussy like nothing. I mean, there's ours, a select few men that can. But remember, women control access to sex because they are the gatekeepers. They can open their gates whenever they want. And, you know, with hookup culture and, you know, women empowerment, sexual liberation, the gates are just flooded open. And they only, they only open it for the few select men, so. I take dating really seriously. Last year I went on like around 20 to 25 first dates. Oh, um, what was that like? It was very fun. It was fun? Yeah. I think when you're <laughs> a woman crush. that takes dating seriously and you have standards, you can kind of cut through the BS quickly, not waste your time, not waste How did you screen out time. the guys? That's actually a great question. So if you're a woman who's marriage minded and you're on a man's hinge and you see more than two party pictures, immediately X. Okay. If you are a woman and you see what he does is an entrepreneur and he definitely is not an entrepreneur next because he actually doesn't have a job and he's just unemployed. <laughs> These are good, good tips. You know, there's still good women out there. You know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, if he has group pictures, try to make sure there's some diversity there because diversity of friends has diversity of mindset and you don't want someone who's stagnant. That's crazy. My four closest friends are all different races. Uh, my friend Chris happens to be black, African-American. Uh, my friend CJ is white and honduras or hondoran hondoran i think i'm saying it wrong uh my friend larry is white blonde hair blue eyes kind of got white guy and then my friend george is mexican and guatemalan so that's interesting i, I didn't even think about how diverse my closest group of friends are we're here in Tokyo, Japan with Sophie from Iran. And so you've heard us talk about passport bureaus. Now we're in a different scenario where Sophie has moved from Iran to Japan. I moved from Iran to Malaysia. I lived in Malaysia five years and then I come to Japan to live. But basically, I, I didn't specifically come to Japan to marry the traditional Japanese man. I came here for mainly for the job. And I, I do really like Asian culture and the face. I do really like Asian, like Asian men in general. Well. Sometimes yeah. I see like a, <laughs> some Europe, um, Western guys come to Japan to marry to the Japanese lady, mm -hmm. in, in, specifically in Japan. But I think Japanese ladies really admire blonde, blue eyes mm -hmm. men is Is because true? of the baby. It will become mm, mixed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of very good for them. Wait, here. Yeah, I mean, she ain't wrong. I think uh, do a lot of Japanese people do kind of really like the the blonde, blue eyes look. Okay, in my opinion about this passport bros. Is it me or the gap in her teeth actually is kind of cute? I don't usually like that in American women so much, but when I see it in her, it just... Gives me a little bit of tingles, I guess. <laughs> issue. Actually, there's nothing to argue about it because we decide who are we going to marry. That they However, do. it is not our fault if your man came across to Asian countries to find women and wife them up. You can call Asian women as uneducated, speak a little English. We don't really care because 
If you happen to come and visit the Philippines, you can definitely prove yourselves that you were wrong. Yep. In the Philippines, kids can tour you around the country because they can communicate in English. They can entertain foreigners because English is part of our educational system. Crazy, right? Women out there and men out there that just want to talk shit on like, you know, the Philippines and these Asian countries. They don't realize how English is actually really encompassed into these countries. Like a lot of my cousins know a decent amount of English because there's an education system for English there. In Cambodia also and Thailand and Vietnam. But here's the thing. You can never expect everyone in the country, in the Philippines, to be fluent in English. This is true. Because that is not our first language. Even everybody in the U.S. is not fluent in English. And I'm talking about Americans. <laughs> but we are able to communicate with you guys. Can you speak Tagalog though? But seriously, not to brag, Asian women are easy to please. We have reasonable lifestyle standards demands and contentment in life mm -hmm. especially for marriage we don't need your men to fatten their bank accounts filipinas don't marry for a green card but your men taking them to their countries it's normal to get them a green card what do you expect <laughs> hmm? and hey not all American men are rich. Nope. That is one of the reasons why you don't want them. Mm -hmm. So what are you talking about marrying for a better life? Asian women, we just wanted to be valued, mm -hmm. cared for, respected, and loved. So regardless of the nationalities, we are treating our husbands or partners the same way because... We definitely know how it feels to be treated like a queen. Ooh. So why not treat them like a king? Mm. These are Reasonable. just simple core values. If you don't have them, why argue? <laughs> Anyways, yo, have a good life. And girls, remember, we are all beautiful. Just be a wife material so there will be no issue. <laughs> Damn. Okay. That's right. Wife material. That is literally what men have been asking for and mother material in the West. And most women don't want kids or not prepared for kids. They think that they can still live the same lifestyle after they have kids and they don't really want to be married. They want the wedding, but they don't want to stay married to someone after, you know, sickness and in health and to death do, death do us part. Ooh, how was that chow, you know? Filipina ladies are just so spicy sometimes, but cute and spicy. It's not like masculine and spicy like the women in the West. And uh, yeah, different passports, man. I kind of like understand that sometimes certain passports get restricted and some passports just don't have enough, uh, the same amount of freedom as others. So just take a look at it, see where you guys want to fall under. So please like and subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao, time.